All right. Uh, text I want to read and share with you today. Galatians chapter 4. Uh, I read these words from the Apostle Paul. He says, I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles to this world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but you are a son. And if a son, then an heir of God. This is one of my favorite sections of Scripture. And one of my favorite verse in the Bible. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. It says here, when the fullness of time. At just the right time, God knows what he's doing. And there was no better time, not a moment too soon, not a moment too late. God sent salvation into this world. God's never hurried. God's never rushed. It was 4,000 years previous that Adam and Eve fell into sin. Sin entered into this world. But God wasn't in a hurry. 4,000 4, years patiently, he awaited. At just the right moment in history to send his son. It's a rush. I don't know about you. I'm not nearly as patient as God. I get hurried. And I'll make a confession today. I, I, I've been rushed. And I've been running, running hard. Today, just take today for example. We've got two services. We had this early service at 9 o'clock. This service here at 10.30. As soon as this service is over, we've got rehearsal for Christmas Eve services. And then I shared just a moment ago, 2 o'clock, I'm going to go home for a few moments, grab a quick bite to eat, and then it's off to the preferred care center. From there, I'll, I'll go home, I will change. Uh, we had a death in our community, a 24-year-old died of a drug overdose, and I was asked to officiate the, the service later tonight, 4.30 p.m. at Old Bridge Funeral Home. So it's a heavy day. It's a very busy day. And what can I say? Tomorrow's Monday. And it's a short week. Because Christmas Eve is Tuesday. I got my parents flying in from Chicago. And the thing about being a pastor is that Sunday comes around with amazing regularity. Get this, it's every seven days. And the thing is, is there's going to be a service next Sunday. So not only do I have to make the final preparations for the Christmas Eve service, but also, since I'm going on a few days of vacation after Christmas is over, I've got to have everything ready for next Sunday before Christmas Eve. So it's a busy, busy couple days. And I'm feeling rushed. I'm feeling hurried. And maybe you can relate because I, I have a feeling I'm not that much different than you. You're feeling hurried. You're feeling rushed. It's a last minute. Did you get your Amazon packages yet? You, got, you can order a two-day shipping today. Tomorrow you got one-day delivery. Maybe you've got to pack and travel somewhere. Maybe you have family coming to see you, so it's all the grocery shopping and getting the house clean and prepared. So much to do. And it may not exactly be the best feeling 
that you have when you're feeling so rushed and so hurried. It can be overwhelming. You know, there's a sense I have that I, I've overcommitted myself. But when I, I look at all the things that I, I'm doing at the same time, none of that, can I say, is unimportant. It's all, it's all important. On Friday, my wife got home from Good Shepherd Children's Center here, her day at work. The kids got home from school. And everyone, hands in the air, it's Christmas break! Yay! And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, it's not Christmas break for me. <laughs> I still got a whole bunch to do. And I came out and said, I can't wait until it's all done. I can't wait till it's all done. Think about those words for a moment. What was, I, what was I, I saying? Now, don't get me wrong here. I love my work. I love being a pastor. I, I'm called to these things, and these things bring me joy. But when we pile all of these things all on at once, we get hurried and, and rushed, and it, it can zap the joy out of things that we would normally, ordinarily enjoy. When we're hurried, our relationships suffer. We get short with others, especially with those that we love. Our health suffers. Our blood pressure increases. We feel the stress. Our bodies are stressed. And that has long-term negative consequences on our health. When we're hurried in rush, our, our work suffers. Because we're going from one thing to the next and we're never able to fully give any one thing the attention that we want to give it or the attention that it deserves. And we lose our drive to give our work our very best, which it deserves. No doubt you can relate. Whether it's a celebration with your family, whether it is the work that you do, we all have times where we have these feelings where we just want to get it done and get through it and it doesn't bring us much joy in the moment so what i want to do right now is, is we recognize the last minute rush before christmas with just a few days left i want i want to pause right now take a deep breath All that stuff that you got to do later, you can do it later. You're right here right now. Be present with God. To hear in this moment what he wants you to hear. Be present with the family of God. Enjoy this moment that he has given to you. Today, this message about the last minute rush. And I wanted to talk about being hurried and rushed, especially because I feel so hurried and rushed. If there was ever a sermon that I preached to myself, this would be the sermon because in many ways I feel like I'm the most hurried and rushed person that I know. Every once in a while, I get this angst within me and this feeling of dread that I need to slow down. I need to unhurry myself. And one of the places where I feel hurried is when I'm driving. And I'll say, I'm going to intentionally, I'm going to muster the willpower, and I'm going to intentionally slow down here. So I'm going to get in the slow lane. And I don't care if five cars pass me by, I'm not going to be in a hurry to where I'm going. So I get in the car, I get in the slow lane, and there I, I'm sitting, I get behind this, this car, it's going really slow in front of me. And one car passes me by, 
Two cars passed me by. Three cars passed me by. Four cars passed me by. Five cars passed me by. I said, God, that's it. I said, five cars. I'm not going to care. But I'm not going to let that sixth car pass. Back into the fast lane I go. And as hard as I try to muster the willpower, I just can't seem to slow down. But there's the problem, isn't it? What did I say? As hard as I try, I can't slow down. Where's God in all of that? Yes, I'm doing it for God. But God never calls us to do work for him. He invites us to do work together with him. Not to rely on our own strength, our own power, but to rely on the strength that he provides. Not our power and might, his power and might. Our rushing so often is about us trying to do it on our own and to achieve our own ends. The question is, why are we so hurried? I'll give you three reasons why we are so hurried. Number one is appetite. Number two is ambition. And number three is approval. Appetite is for stuff. It is the desire for possessions and experiences. How much can I possess and gain until time runs out? How much of this world can I see? And we make it about things like food and alcohol and sex. They're all included in this. And we strive to experience as much as we can experience and have as much as we can have in this lifetime. And our appetite is never quite satisfied. Ambition, it is for accomplishment. We want to feel important and we strive for the promotion. We strive to be productive with every moment that we have to live every life to its full, every moment to its fullest, to borrow from the army, so that we can be all that we can be. Approval, it's to be liked and, liked and accepted by others. We don't want to disappoint anyone. We become people pleasers trying to live up to other people's expectations of us. This is striving to fit in. And the thing is about these three, appetite and ambition, oftentimes we strive for those ultimately for approval. Often our claim of being busy and the reason we are busy is to be perceived as being important by others. If we can show that we are busy, that must mean that we are important because the way to gain material things, the way to achieve success in this world, it is through being busy. If we hurry enough and we rush enough, we can gain those things, we can gain the respect, we can gain the approval of others. People will respect us because we can show them how important we are, and so we make ourselves busy. But busy for what? Where are we rushing? Think about this. I talked about with my family, I was rushing and my aim was to be all done, for it to be all over. And in fact, in effect, that is what so many are working for, rushing for, hurrying for. We, when we were in school, we rushed to graduate. And then when we're working, so often the rush is to retire. We long and anticipate and, and we wear ourselves to get to that day, to that time, when it will be over. And we say it's only for a season. This is a busy season. 
you know, as soon as Christmas is over, then I can relax. But then it's January. And we wait until the next month, until the next year, until the next decade. Then we can slow down. But we keep rushing until we can rush no longer. I'll tell you what, though. One day, we will rest. We will enter into our ultimate rest. And in that moment, all of the rushing and being hurried, it's not going to matter all that much. And for many of us, our rushing and our hurrying is ultimately leading us to our ultimate rest just a little bit sooner. I've been a pastor for 20 years, and I've seen this happen a number of times now, where an individual or couple so much anticipating the time of retirement and doing everything to make that happen, but they break themselves down and wear themselves out to get to that point, and when that time of retirement finally comes, comes they are so broken that they're not even able to enjoy their rest. The question has to be asked, where are we rushing? And is it, is it worth it? Certainly you can rush to temporarily satisfy your appetite. You can rush and you can hurry to accomplish things, to soothe your ambition. And in all of that, work to impress others. The thing is, is that you may impress others, but they may not be as impressed as you think they are. Because oftentimes we think that other people think about us a lot more than they actually do. Is it worth it? Is it worth the toll that it takes on your relationships? How many people work and strive and they accomplish what they aim to accomplish, but left in its wake is a trail of broken relationships, broken marriages, broken relationships with their children, broken families. The toll it takes on our health, the toll that it takes on our faith. Because in our hurrying and in our rushing, again, we, it's about ourselves and about what we can do, what we can accomplish. Where is God in that picture? And so many people in our culture, they simply, in their striving and their pushing, they don't have time for God. And God gets pushed out. But Jesus asks the question, what is it that a man gains the whole world? He reaches the pinnacle of success, yet he forfeits that he forfeits his soul. King Solomon, he was considered the wisest and most successful king of his generation, the greatest king of his time. He's the writer of Ecclesiastes, and he has this to say. I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven, all the rushing, all the hurrying. He says... It's an unhappy business. It's not a joyous business. It's not a happy business. It's an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I've seen everything that we're chasing, everything that we're running after, done under the sun, and behold, all of it is vanity and a striving chasing the wind. Think about this. Very few, very few, even among the most accomplished people, will be remembered beyond their generation. In a, in a world where change is accelerated, a person who's in the limelight today becomes tomorrow, yesterday's news. And the day after that, they're long forgotten. Another thing about the hurry, being rushed, 
is we get in such a rush to get where we're going, we put on blinders. And we miss what's around us. We miss out seeing and appreciating everyday blessings that God gives to us. When we're hurried and we're rushed, one of the first things that goes missing is gratitude. We're so driven, it robs us of our gratitude and we lack joy. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, it is joy, it is peace, it is patience, it is kindness. I don't know about you, but when I read about those things, I know I don't experience those things in the hurry. But it does not say there that the fruit of the Spirit is a hurried mess. Being hurried and rushed points that we're doing it all on our own. We're striving on our own strength rather than resting in God's strength. It shows that we're living for our glory rather than for God's glory. When we're looking for the approval of man, it exposes that we do not know what it means to have God's approval and have not grasped the significance of that approval. The Apostle Paul says this, For I am now seeking the approval of man, or am I seeking the approval of God? Am I trying to please man? Because if I'm trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Jesus Christ. It all goes back to the question of identity. What is your identity? And is your identity that as a child of God? For the average American, their identity is performance-based. Their identity is based upon what they do and furthermore, how well they do what they do. As a Christian... Our identity is not based upon what we do, but our identity is based upon what Jesus has done for us. It is through Christ that we are brought into the family of God. It is not about what you have done, whether you've done good, whether you have done bad. It's all about Jesus. It's about who, not what you do, but whose you are. Many of you, you were baptized as an infant. You were brought into God's family and given God's approval before you ever accomplished anything in this world. It says here, in the same way, going back to Galatians that I read earlier, when we were children... We were enslaved to the elementary principles of this world. Rush, hurry, get ahead, fill your appetite, accomplish what you can accomplish, and then you will find approval. But when the fullness of time had come, in God's time, in God's way, in God's wisdom, he sent forth his son, Jesus, born of a woman under the law to redeem you and me who are under the law, under so much stress, in the hurry, in the rush, so that we might receive adoptions, adoption as sons. Whose are you? Another thing, enjoy the journey. Last summer, our youth attended the National Youth Gathering in Minneapolis, Minnesota. One of the things we talked about before we went on that trip was how we would get there. Some of us wanted to fly, and some of us wanted to drive. I insisted on driving. And the reason I insisted on driving was because I knew that there was joy in the journey. Half the fun was simply getting there. And I knew that the kids, when they look back on that time, they would remember the trip there and back 
as much as they would remember the event itself and would remember the trip maybe even more. You know, who could forget when Dorian went on the largest roller coaster for his first time at Cedar Point? If we had flown and not gone on that journey, he would have never had that experience. My point is this, life is a journey. Life is not a destination. And so many of us, we are hurrying and rushing to get there, to someplace else. But the truth of the matter is, as long as we're on this earth, we are here, and we will never yet be there. And there's always some new place to get to. My point on this journey, enjoy the moment. Enjoy where you are right here in this time, wherever that is that the ride is taking you. I heard a, a, a new name for Christmas just recently. Another church was advertising their Christmas Eve worship services, and they called it a crisp mess. A crisp mess sounds descriptive because for a lot of us our christmas is a mess whether it's a the relationships with our family might be a mess whether it is the mess that your kitchen will be whether it's the mess that the kids will make when all those presents get wrapped unwrapped and brother is beating up brother you know how it goes in my house. And sisters picking on brothers and brothers are picking on sister. You know how Christmas can be a Christmas mess. Enjoy it. Because so many, 10 years down the road, they look back into the past and they wish that they had the Christmas mess. Enjoy it while you have it. Enjoy the journey. And it's not about willpower. It's not about, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to enjoy this. Whether I'm going I'm to I'm make sure I enjoy this. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I enjoy it. It's not your strength. It's the strength of the Spirit as God allows and so we're going to close in prayer here. But as we close in prayer today, we want to pray and invite the presence of God in. That's what Christmas is all about. It's about God who became flesh. God who entered into this world. God who entered into this life. And so we pray today that God would, by his Holy Spirit, enter into our Christmas, would enter into our busyness and our hurriedness, that he would take our appetite, our ambition, and our desire for approval from men, and that he would give us a new heart, that he would fill our lives not with busyness, but with all the fruit of the Spirit. So please join me. Let's invite God in. Heavenly Father, we come before you today maybe anxious, definitely busy, hurried and rushed. It's the last minute and there's so much to do. And maybe, Lord, today our hearts are filled with dread and we can't wait for it all to be done. Lord, we pray today that, that you would enter in, that you would give us a new spirit, not a spirit who seeks just to get through it all, but, but a spirit that would be present in the moment, that would be present with family members, seeking reconciliation and unity. 
a spirit that is at peace amongst the, the whirlwind, amidst the, the messiness. Help us, Lord, to, to linger and, and just to appreciate the moment for what it is. To enjoy our time with family, to enjoy the, the meals, and the goodies, the gifts, but most importantly, to enjoy the presence of Jesus, the Savior, born in Bethlehem, born to die, born to give us new life. Birth that, Lord, in us this day. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen.